and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can set up our teleport target areas and our teleport target points to also work with free teleporting, which allows us to teleport anywhere around our scene. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at, and it really helps to fund these videos. Thanks to all the existing patrons and those patrons who are at the relevant level for a video shout out, you'll see your name scroll up on the screen. Thanks for your support. So I'm working in a scene that was the previous scene from the teleport target areas video. I've moved a bunch of the elements into the VRTK previous tutorial elements game object, but you'll find the previous elements in there as I'm going through this video. So the issue that we've got is whenever we teleport somewhere, Originally, we just had the curved pointers selected event set up to call the teleporters teleport method. Now, the problem we've got there is if we were to call teleport onto one of our spatial targets, such as the teleport target point or the teleport target area, as we've seen in the previous videos as well, when activated occurs on one of those, we actually call teleport as well. So what would happen is we'd call teleport on our pointer and then teleport would also be called again on our teleport targets, which isn't what we want. So let's come up with some logic that allows us to teleport correctly, depending on where we're teleporting to. But the first thing I'm going to do is just create a holder game object for some teleport logic for the pointer. So I just create an empty game object and I'm going to call this pointer teleport logic. And in here, we're going to use an object pointer event proxy emitter. And what this allows us to do is take one of the events from the pointer and then run multiple things on it without having to tie all that into the pointer. You don't need to do this. It just makes things easier to understand. So we'll add an object pointer event proxy meter component. And all we want to do here now is add three listeners. And the first listener, what it's going to do is actually going to turn on the teleporter game object. So we'll grab, drag and drop the teleporter game object. And for the function, we'll select game object and we'll say set active bool and we'll make sure the bool is true. This will become more apparent in a moment. And then the next thing we want to do previously in our pointer, we've got it called in the spatial targets do dispatch select. We want to do the same thing again. So go back to pointer teleport logic and that second listener is going to be the spatial targets dispatcher. And then on the spatial target dispatcher, we want to call do dispatch select. And now finally, we want to just call teleport. So if we go to the teleporter, drag in teleporter, and then on teleporter facade, we just want to call teleport. So just going through the logic here, what's happening is we're turning on the teleport game object. We'll then call in the dispatcher select, and then we're calling teleport on our teleporter. This will make more sense in a moment. The next thing we're going to do now is extract the logic that was in our teleport points and our teleport area that was calling teleport. So I'm going to create another empty game object and I'm going to call this one spatial teleport logic. And in here, we only need to work with a surface data proxy emitter. So I'm going to add a surface data proxy emitter component now. And again, like the other proxy emitter we used, all it does is allows us to chain events off that other event just to tidy things up a little bit. So the two things that we want to do in this one is we need two listeners. And the first thing we want to do anytime we call teleport on one of our teleport target points or area is we want to call our teleporter. So teleporter facade and we want to call teleport. And then this is the trick now. What we want to do now is go into here, bring over our teleport uh, instant again, and then set the game object active to false. So what this logic is doing is whenever we call our pointer, we're going to call this logic. This is going to turn the teleporter game object on, which means the logic will work. We'll then call the dispatch select. That will talk to any one of these, which in a moment we're going to set up to come here. That will then call teleport and then it's going to disable the teleporter. So what that means is because the teleporter is disabled, when we call teleport here, it won't work. That means whenever we actually teleport onto one of our spatial target points, this teleport won't be called because we've turned it off. But if we do teleport somewhere else that isn't one of these spatial target points, the dispatcher doesn't get called. And if the dispatcher doesn't get called, this logic won't get called, which means our teleporter will still be on. And if our teleporter is still on, this teleport will then run. So to get that working, what we need to do, first of all, is update our pointer 
So on our pointer, rather than call the spatial target dispatcher, we now just need to call our pointer teleport logic. And we want to call the object pointer event proxy meter, and we want to receive. And what that will do is it will pass that event data through into here, and then all these will trigger with that event data. Then the next thing we want to do is go through each of our points and areas, and wherever they're calling teleport, we just want to call the spatial teleport logic. So for each one of these, we just bring this in and we change that to be the surface data proxy meter receive. And then for the next one, bring it down, surface data proxy meter receive. And for each of these as well, we can see they're all calling the teleport in a different position. So they all want to call the surface data proxy meter receive. And the next one, surface data proxy emitter receive. And the final one, surface data proxy emitter receive. And the last thing we need to do is we did set up in our pointer a rule of saying it can only be active if we're touching one of our teleport target areas. So it wouldn't be active anywhere else. So if we go and look at our all pointer rules, we can see one of those is only allow teleport targets rule, which is if we click on that, this one, which only allows elements that have the spatial target disabled tag, which we no longer want. So if we go back to our all pointer rules, we can simply select this element and just click delete. And then we've only got the other two rules that we still do want. So there we go, we're all set up. We should be able to teleport anywhere within our scene now and be able to use the teleport targets as before. So let's jump in and see that working. So we're in the scene and now as we can see, wherever I put my pointer, it's allowing it to be valid. And if I teleport out, we can see we teleport. However, we are going to notice an issue now. If I teleport over one of the existing teleport target points and I teleport, we no longer get the fade. So if I hover over any one of these, the teleport target area, or one of the teleport target points, we get no fade. But if I go anywhere else, we do get the fade. So let's jump back into the editor and see how we fix that. So let's review our logic. What we're doing is every time we call teleporter, we're literally turning off the teleport game object. Now the problem we've got there is when we turn the teleport game object off, it means the fade that runs on the teleport game object can no longer work. So what we need to do as well is actually separate out that call to the teleporter, and then we will turn that game object off so the teleport game object always exists. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create another empty game object just called teleport logic. And on the teleport logic, we're going to add another surface data proxy emitter. And this component simply calls teleport on the teleporter for us. So if we add the listener and then on our teleporter instant, grab, drag and drop, and then teleporter facade, teleport. Now, wherever we reference teleporter before, we can now simply reference this game object instead. So if we go back to our pointer teleport logic, Instead of turning off the teleporter, we actually want to turn off teleport logic. So again, teleport logic, game object, set active ball will be true as before. And then instead of calling teleport facade teleport, we want to call teleport logic. And then we just want to call receive on our surface data proxy emitter. And then in our spatial teleport logic, instead of calling teleport facade teleport, again, we just want to call our teleport logic and surface data proxy emitter, we just want to call receive. And then again, rather than turning off the teleporter game object, we now turn off its proxy, this teleporter logic. So again, select game object, set active, and make sure it's false. So this means the teleport game object, this one will always be on in the scene, but our logic to interact with it has now been separated out into this proxy, which we can control and therefore determine how we want it to work. So let's run the scene and see if this works the way we want to now. So we're back in the scene again, and we can still teleport outside of our teleport target areas. But now when I go to one of the teleport target areas, we can see I actually still get the fade, which is what we wanted originally. And if we go to one of the teleport target areas down here, we can see that's fading around and we can go outside and that's all working perfectly fine. And our table is still considered invalid. So there we go. We've set it up now where we can use our teleport target areas the teleport target points and free teleporting and it all works with each other. I hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, leave any likes, dislikes and comments down below and please consider becoming a VRTK patron as that really helps out. Thanks for watching and bye for now.